Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast, and this is my review of Gun Woman, a Japanese exploitation thriller from 2015. Now after his wife is raped and murdered, a doctor plans revenge. He abducts a drug addict and trains her to murder his target, a psychopath who engages in horrific acts of violence and sex at a desolate, secure location. So the first thing you'll notice about Gun Woman is that it's a pretty nasty, mean-spirited movie. It has stomach-churning gore, violence against women, and some repulsive characters. The villain is completely reprehensible and evil. The opening 10 minutes is a good representation, though, of what to expect in this film. You know, most viewers will probably turn the film off immediately after it begins, which is understandable. But if the opening scenes intrigue you, you might like this one. Things get downright shocking and crazy in spots. The bloodletting might give you an upset stomach, and there's no comedic content to take the edge off. So Gun Woman definitely sets itself apart from some of the other crazy Japanese gore films from recent memory, because this movie takes itself seriously, and virtually nothing is played for laughs. You need to understand this before going into it. Now, despite the standard uh, revenge premise of the film, there are actually a few surprises and very creative ideas here that I enjoyed. The smuggling plan is pretty awesome. I won't go into detail on that to, as to ruin the surprise for you. But I've never seen anything quite like that in a film before, uh, off the top of my head. So that was pretty cool. It's like horrific, but oddly captivating at the same time. Even the cliche stuff, like the training sequence where he's training this girl, is very engaging because it's detailed and specific regarding the defenses and security measures that surround the villain's location. And the infiltration also requires an unorthodox plan to work, which is pretty cool. So if you decide to watch this movie based on this review, my review, I suggest that you do not read any plot synopses or anything about it before watching it, because there's a lot of stuff that could be spoiled in this. Gun Woman is fairly low budget, and it does feel a bit on the cheap side in terms of performances and production values. Asami is the lead actress, and we've seen her in a bunch of these recent Jay Gore films over the past decade, you know, including The Machine Girl and stuff like that. Not exactly a great actress, but... She does do a good job in Gun Woman. The side actors are decent, but there's really nothing uh, particularly impressive regarding like standout performances in this film. So don't go in there, go into this expecting that necessarily. But as a bonus, Tatsuya Nakadai has a cameo. Yes, that guy, the famous classic Japanese actor who was in all those those famous films from the 60s and going forward. Oh yeah, he's in this film. Uh, I was not really expecting him to be in a film like Gun Woman, which was kind of weird, but I got a chuckle out of it. I'm like, I can't believe this guy's in this movie. He's only in the film for like 10 seconds, though. There's also quite a bit of narration uh, from two characters in America who talk about uh, this revenge plot as if it's like an urban legend, like it may or may not be true, what's, what's going down, which was kind of cool. At first, I thought it was a little awkward, when you get these two guys talking, you know, driving in, in like a desert on their way to Las Vegas. <laughs> you know, you're like, wait, is this a Japanese movie? But uh, I'm glad they went with that choice. It just gives it a little bit of a, of a personality, you know, the film. So I, I liked it. <clears throat> the infiltration finale will definitely satisfy a certain type of viewer. It's gritty, it's bloody, and it's violent. If you like those things, you'll like the finale in this. And there's also some suspense because you know exactly what the protagonist needs to do to accomplish this plan and take this guy out. And there's a few different things, and you know, when she's struggling to complete them, it's pretty, uh, I'd say it's pretty suspenseful, I think. Surprisingly so. Uh, well executed. Now, on a side note, one thing I noticed is that, and I, it might be weird for me to bring this up, but <clears throat> I noticed it. In recent years, full frontal nudity has become slightly more common in Japanese films. Now, historically, you know, a woman's lower bits would typically be blurred out all, all, all the time. You know what I mean? Uh, maybe not all the time, but most of the time. 
But that trend just seems to be changing. I find it to be kind of odd. Uh, as another example, there was full frontal female nudity in Hanadama the Origin as well. So I'm not sure exactly why it's being allowed now nowadays. Maybe due to independent distribution of films or something like that. I'm not really sure. But if any of you know the reason, let me know in the comments section below. It's just, it just seems kind of odd that the restrictions in that sense would be kind of, uh, I guess, ramping down or back just a little bit. Now, there's only a few examples that I noticed, but uh, I did notice them. But overall, Gunwoman is not for the squeamish and probably too disgusting for uh, the average viewer. The average viewer probably will not like this film. But if you like nasty revenge films that provide some neat little twists and creative moments, hey, check this out. It's available on Amazon Streaming in the United States. And as always, I'll see you next time.